earliest food memory, I think, is making scrambled eggs with my mother. I realize now as a parent that I probably wasn't making those scrambled eggs. I think I was three and a half or four. And the moment I started cooking professionally, I realized that it was a creative outlet that I needed. For me, it's not just about the food, it's about the service and helping people get to the table makes me really happy. What I'm looking for in the perfect risotto is properly cooked, al dente, you know, that just tender grain where you still can detect the rice grain. I love that little umami of Parmigiano Reggiano, that little, that little spark of flavor throughout it. The more I eat it, the more I make it, the more I like it. I wanted to welcome you into my home today to make risotto. It's such a soul-satisfying dish and it's one I love to make for family and friends at home. I start by uh, mincing a yellow onion. And you're gonna sweat this onion down, but you just wanna go across so that you have a nice small dice. And the amount of onion needed is gonna depend on how much risotto you're making. So we're gonna put in just a little bit of butter. This is unsalted butter. And add your onions into the pan. Now the way I do this, it's a two-step process. Um, although it doesn't have to be a two-step process. Um, you could go straight to dinner at this point. Um, but what I encourage everyone to do is to, to cook it about halfway. And you're gonna cool it out on a sheet tray, uh, pop it in your fridge, that can be a day ahead, that could be the morning of, and that way when you're making dinner for your family or for friends, it's gonna come together really quickly and uh, you won't be locked in the kitchen for too long. So we're just letting these onions sweat nicely. So when my onions are tender, and they can have a tiny bit of color, but tender is what I'm looking for because I want them to melt into your risotto. You can use Arborio or you could use Carnaroli. I really enjoy Carnaroli and I use Acorello, which is an organic rice uh, from, from Italy. And you do not have to deglaze with wine, but I like the flavor that it adds to it. So a little bit off heat. I'm gonna add about a quarter cup. I'm not gonna worry if I'm all the way sec, all the way dry here. Add one ladle full of hot stock. Hot stock's important. You wanna stir right away because the rice does want to stick a little bit at that moment. There's a belief that the starch is made somehow by the stirring, and it's not. The starch is naturally on the rice. It's coming out into your liquid. You'll see that when we hold it on the sheet tray, we leave enough liquid around it, so we're really giving the starch some room to move, um, and it'll come back later and help us make a really creamy risotto. So we're gonna take this down just a minute or two longer. You just wanna see, it gets a little dry, but right around now, is when I'm gonna add some more stock. It start, the bubbles are starting to get larger and more visible, and I'm just about down. And again, we're so early in this phase, I'm not worried about adding too much stock or overcooking it yet. So do you see this again? We've gotten down to where the bubbles are really changing. You see almost all rice, and you're starting to see some creaminess that's really showing itself. And in some ways, that stock is reducing. I think that'll probably be my last addition for the par cooking. This is looking good. But you notice I'm not really worried about the stirring. It's not, it's not really about that. Um, I mean, I've stirred it plenty of times, nothing's sticking. I can see the change in how I can see all this starch in the liquid. And if you see that, you can see how much viscosity that liquid has. That's what's gonna help you have creamy risotto, one of the many things. So we can stop it here. I'm gonna turn the burner off. <laughs> and you can see that there's still liquid. It's suspended in the liquid. So I'll bring over a sheet tray. You don't have to line it, but it does help for cleanup later. And you wanna work pretty quickly. And you see the liquid that's coming off right there? I want that with my rice. We're gonna save that for later. So it's another nice reason to have the parchment. And you want to work quickly just to lay it all out. Some sort of a flat spatula like this is lovely. 
what I tell my crew is try not to even have two grains on top of one another because the bottom grain could pop a little bit um, and your risotto is going to have a, an impression of being done when it's not. This goes right into the fridge. It's ready in like 10 minutes, but again, um, let it cool and then put it in a container. It can be overnight. It could be two days. So now that you have your par-cooked risotto, we start with a shallot. And I think this is another thing that builds depth of flavor. You have your onions that were sauteed in the beginning, and now you have shallots that you're adding. You could skip this step, but I encourage you to go buy a shallot or two and do it. So we're going to turn the pan on. We have our par-cooked rice that I'll bring over in just a second. And the same thing, I just want to mince this shallot super fine and we'll sweat the shallot in butter. Add the rice and we're going to deglaze with white wine again. If I was making a red risotto, I'd deglaze with red wine there. <laughs> so we have nicely minced shallots, a little bit of butter. If you put too much butter here, it'll actually break out of the risotto later, which is very annoying. Um, you're, you're making an emulsion ultimately, and um, you want to make sure that your butter's um, properly whipped into that emulsion. So this is going to be a pretty fa fast process. This is the par cooked risotto from earlier. So I'm going to make black risotto this time because that's my true favorite risotto. So turn it down just a pinch. And deglaze. And right away go in. You can see the wine's just about evaporated. Now at this point you've gone halfway. So you are now at a point where anything after this first edition is going to be a question. You're going to have to taste it. You're going to have to know, yes, there's a small risk you could overcook it. It's still going to be delicious. Um, and the risk is later. The burner's going to go back up. At first I was just really worried I might um, make my shallots too dark. Now we want it to be cooking and cooking strongly, aggressively. Cuttlefish ink. No household probably needs this much cuttlefish ink. Um, you can buy it in smaller uh, packets. Owajimaya, places like that, uh, carry it. Um, you can always find squid ink. I love cuttlefish ink. It seems to have a better, deeper flavor. Um, but don't fret if you can only find squid ink. It also makes this risotto have an incredible silky mouthfeel, um, which I love. So we've added a second little addition of, of broth. What I'm looking for is that there's going to be a visual change to the risotto. I mean, it obviously plumps. The grain goes from being itty bitty to a little larger. Not that much larger, though. Um, what I always want to keep going on, though, is that bit of moisture, that kind of bound sauce around. This is the time I've got enough moisture resting around it. I'm going to add the ink. This can be a little, this is the tricky part. Every ink is different. And so we have found one jar will be salty and the next jar will not be salty. And you don't know until you've made the risotto, um, which means sometimes we eat risottos and make you all another one at Cafe Juanita. So this is an important thing about any risotto. More important to rest the risotto than to be stirring it. It honestly is more important. So you can see that the liquid is pooling off on the outside. I've turned the heat off. And what I'm going to do is keep bringing it back over itself, flattening the rice out so it kind of takes all of that liquid towards it. And I'm going to let this rest for a minute and a half, two minutes. It's very important. It settles the starches. We're close. See how it's starting to, the, the liquid's weeping less. And you have plenty of time right now. It's still a tiny bit underdone. It's just finishing. We're going to go back on the heat after we've put a tiny bit of cheese on this. So while this rests, what we can do is um, a little bit of garlic. You're just making scampi, basically. 
Um, I love the acidity though that goes into this uh, dish. It's super rich and strong and you want to eat a lot of this risotto. And so the thing that makes that possible is acidity um, in any dish anyway. Uh, so we bring um, a nicely lemoned butter sauce over the top, usually filled with spot prawns from Alaska. Um, but it doesn't have to be. Or octopus is great too. You don't really need very much butter. A little bit of garlic. Take some parsley and just do a rough chop. Again, it brings freshness to a really rich dish. This is piment. You can use espalette. This is um, spicy. A little, little kosher salt. I'm just going to put the parsley in there. You could make this ahead, just don't add the lemon until the very end. If you wanted to right now off heat, I would put my prawns in off heat and let them just barely cook if I had spot prawns. Unsalted butter. You can see the steam that comes off when I move it. So this is still very, very hot. I haven't added any salt yet. I'm going to put just the tiniest bit of Parmigiano Reggiano. And then I turn the heat back on so that the cheese really melts in. I'm going to taste it quickly before it sets. This needs half a second. And then we're going to turn it off. And this is where the last bit of stirring happens. This stirring, I think, matters immensely. The same uh, way that the liquid was kind of oozing off of it when we first let it set, this stirring brings it all together. And I think part of it is I'm cooling it down a little bit, honestly. And so this can be the moment, don't overreact. For me, this is the time when, when I think, oh no, it's looser than I thought it was. If I leave it for half a second while I go get a plate or whatever I do, um, I often come back and two or three stirs and we're ready. So it's, it's taken me a while to realize, you know, to wait, find out what you have before you react to it. Because food is, it's, it, it's in a process. It's still cooking, it's heating. Um, and so there's, it's the same as resting meat. You have to rest your risotto. Um, so we'll go in this cute little bowl and we'll take just a little bit of lemon. Use the back side to taste for salt. And you can make this pretty darn acidic. This is one of my favorite things in the whole world. And I do love to make it at home. I hope you will. I'm going to taste it. Mm. It's good.